though often neglected. Salvation also includes the liberation of the cosmos from its bondage to decay and destruction. The whole cosmos groans along with humanity for relief from the frustration to which the world has been subjected. God saves the cosmos by renewing it, by ushering in a new or renewed heaven and earth. This hope is rooted in God's promise to Abraham, the land which includes the whole cosmos, according to Romans 4 verse 13, is the inheritance of Israel. Abraham is the heir of the cosmos. The creation now belongs to a descendant of Abraham, the son of David, the son of God. As co-heirs with Jesus, we too are heirs of the cosmos. Based on this promise to Abraham, according to Peter, we wait for the new heavens and new earth where righteousness will dwell. God promised Abraham an inheritance, and that inheritance is a new heaven and a new earth. The Christian hope includes a new earth. Too often Christians have thought they must escape the creation and fly away in glory to some eternal celestial heaven. If we mean that we want to escape the present evil age or escape the decaying destructive powers of death, then I understand that point. I do want to escape that. But the biblical story is not ultimately about escape, but redemption. God redeemed the body of Jesus through raising him from the dead and transforming his death-bound body into an immortal body. This is our hope as well. One day God will redeem our bodies through raising us from the dead and transforming our death-bound bodies into immortal bodies. This is also the hope of the creation itself. The creation groans to be set free or liberated from its bondage to decay. And it hopes to share in the freedom of the glory of the children of God. The resurrection of the creation is rooted in the resurrection of God's people, just as the resurrection of God's people is rooted in the resurrection of God's Messiah. The resurrection of Jesus, our own resurrection, and the resurrection of the creation are inextricably tied together. The resurrection of Jesus is the inauguration of new creation. Our resurrection is our participation in the new creation. And the creation itself becomes new because it is the dwelling place of the resurrected people of God with their resurrected Messiah. In this way, the creation is like a mother about to give birth to something new. The creation presently experiences something akin to labor pains as it groans in eager expectation for its liberation and transformation. The present creation will give birth to a new creation, just as our bodies will give birth to new bodies in the resurrection. The Abrahamic promise was first given to ethnic Israel, but by faith and because of the Messiah, it includes the nations as well. Perhaps on the new heaven and new earth, the redeemed of ethnic Israel will dwell in Palestine, in the land between the rivers of Egypt and Babylon, and the rest of the earth will belong to the people of God as they again reign on the earth with God. The kingdom of God will fill the earth. The earth is the inheritance of God's people. As Jesus promised, the meek shall inherit the earth. One day, the reign of God will fill it from the east to the west, from the north to the south. The whole earth unlike its present condition, will be holy to the Lord.